Ilan, a lot of the a lot of the left, certainly a lot of libertarians, and um, you know, they argue that we've got this story wrong, right? That the real cause of all this is if you read Bin Laden, is not our appeasement and our weakness and their uh, ideological commitment. The real cause is our presence in the Middle East, our, uh, you know, they still bring up the, the Iranian revolution is justified because we killed the prime minister of, or, we, or the CIA helped depose, not even kill, a prime minister of Iran in 1954, I think, something around then. And then um, the fact that the troops in Saudi Arabia, remember, Bin Laden makes a big deal out of American troops in the Holy Land, infidels in the Holy Land. How do you respond to, um, to kind of those claims? I think we're going to see it again today in a lot of the commentary on this. Uh, this was all our fault. It's our foreign policy. I mean, one of, one of the reasons I and all of us really opposed Ron Paul so vehemently uh, when he ran for president was because this is his attitude. It was all America's fault, not America's fault in the sense that we appeased them, <laughs> but America's fault in the sense that we brought it upon ourselves. So what's the answer? It's a gross misunderstanding and misconceptualization of what happened. And I think it's it's motivated. It's not, a, I think it's people who push this line and who are responsible for knowing the facts. I think there's an, a, an aim here of not seeking the truth, but a, affirming a certain agenda or a certain perspective. So let's take some of these and, and unpack them. So let, I think the biggest one is uh, Osama bin Laden talks about a number of things, including American troops in Saudi Arabia defiling the Holy Land. And he talks about uh, uh, the, the, the harm that's being done to Palestinians, our other Muslim brothers in the region. Go, go read what he says. And I, I, I've read it. I think it's really interesting. And I think if you read that and what you take away is American foreign policy is the problem, then you are really not giving due attention to what he, the, the premises of his argument. So the premises of his argument are, we know that Islam has to rule, it's the truth. And part of what he's about is bringing the truth to full flourishing and full realization where he can. That's the point of being in the path of Allah. The objection to American troops is that they're in the holy land, in the land of the two holy places, Saudi Arabia. And it's the, they're infidels, they don't belong there. How dare you violate what should be holy as long? And, and what is his objection to Israel? It's that it is a, a non-Muslim power governing a holy place that belongs to Islam, the, the Dome of the Rock. And what is his objection to the, what's his view of the Palestinian issue? Is there some outcome of that that would satisfy him. Yes, the outcome in which the Muslims dominate and kill all the Jews and push them into the ocean. So th yeah, there's no policy here where you could tweak it and, and come up with some, yeah, if we just make these adjustments, he'd be happy because the outcome that he's starting from <clears throat> that he wants to reach is Islam must dominate. Anything that, that deviates from that is abhorrent. It has to be overruled. It's the same sort of thing with um, why does why, why do the Islamists object to the Egyptian rule in Egypt? It's not. I don't think it's primarily because America is allied with Egypt. I think that's a knock against Egypt, but it's because Egypt is an infidel or not infidel, impious regime. It's not sufficiently religious. So I think any there is really no way to understand Bin Laden or just Islamists more generally. Like if you think about what we talked about with the Salman Rushdie, which we should come back to in a second the whole way of understanding the world from their premises is this is our goal. Islam is the truth. You must, you must swallow it. And we're going to put a knife to your throat until you do. And if you don't do that, there's something wrong with you. And we'll, we'll, we'll come back after you. And when you see the concrete issues like Palestine or uh, American foreign policy, it's no, you didn't. It's not that they got the wrong policy. It's that there is no policy we could follow in the Middle East that would satisfy them except rolling over and dying and leaving. And I think that's the essential to take that. Now, I don't want to get into, I mean, people who are interested in, in the Iran um, 1953 coup, and the, I don't think it's really, I mean, go read about it, read reputable historians. And there's some interesting new work being done on that that's been published in the last five years. And I recommend reading that because it is nothing like as simple a story as you think it is. The American role, as I read it, is 
they were really incompetent and, and trivial elements of it. Incompetent says they didn't have a clue what they were going to do with this. And if, but that's, that's just the history part of it, which people who are making this argument have a responsibility to really understand before they make a claim about it. But then to think about if you, if this actually were true, would it justify what, would it justify creating a totalitarian regime in Iran? Like you're upset about this uh, removal of a, what became an authoritarian leader, but it, it doesn't, I mean, there's no way in which the response to that is, yes, we're going to subjugate everyone under Islam. That is not, and then the same thing with the way that Iran policy has followed since the revolution in 1979, which is to go outside its borders and bring its revolution to everywhere that it can. And that, that, that's not a rational response to that kind of um, incident, even if the incident were accurately described, and I don't think it was. Um, I, I want to say one thing about the Rushdie, and we should talk more about the later events as well, but you were making the point, Ankar, about how ideology is unreal to the pragmatist mindset, or ideas and abstractions are unreal. And I want to connect the Rushdie incident with the sale of arms. I think it's called the uh, Arms for Contra. It's a very complicated deal under the, the Reagan administration, but essentially it was, we're selling arms to bad people in South America, Latin America, in order to get some kind of convoluted scheme to release American hostages in Lebanon. That's how I remember. And there's this whole kind of maze of, of things that happened here. And there's other things we we're trying to do with American hostages in Lebanon too. This is under Reagan, the, the patron saint of Republicans as he's now, he's been canonized. Like this is the ideal for Republicans. And, and it's, this is, I know he said good things about in opposition to the Soviet Union. I, I, I get that. And I, I, when I read his speeches, I think, yeah, this, this is a good that he said that. But I think it's important to get that it wasn't like Reagan's foreign policy was outstandingly good. And we should all go back to that. And I think what his policy actually reflects is some of this mentality of, well, what's the problem with dealing with Iran if we can get our people free? What's the problem with dealing with these bad people in Latin America? The, you mean their ideas matter? What's wrong with you? What, how does that even come into the picture? And I think that when you get into George H. W. Bush, who's even more on this premise, like George W. H. Bush is a sort of intellectually vacuous compared to Reagan, who I don't think was very intellectual to begin with. And when you get the Rushdie thing, is it's not only that how could how could we even care about free speech? Is this abstract thing? It's the, the, the worse, so the, the one element of it that I think is underappreciated is that it's coming from Iran. It's, it's ideologically motivated attack on free speech. This isn't just a bunch of people upset about a book. This is people upset because of its impact on their religious uh, um, ideology, and they're willing to kill people over that. That that, that reality has no, like, doesn't register. And I think the consequences of it not being taken seriously, not being understood, ripple through the coming decades. And I think it's, it's a, a, a significant part of the story for understanding 9-11 and, and then what happened after 9-11, because it's not like it's the last incident where free speech was uh, threatened. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think, meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see 
your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at yourunbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs>